I managed to get a Reese Sliders episode out, and this time it's only been a few months instead of a year? Neat. Hello everyone, I'm Matt Mitrovich, the Alternate Historian. Today we return to Reese Sliders, my retrospective on the campy 90s alternate history TV show, Sliders. Today's review is on the Prince of Wales, spelled W-A-I-L-S. As a friendly reminder, I'm watching the series in order the creators intended and not when they aired, which is great since the last episode ended on a cliffhanger where we saw our heroes staring down a giant wave about to engulf San Francisco. So when we meet them again in this episode, they are somehow hanging off the side of an almost submerged tower. Through his constant complaining, Rembrandt suggests the city flooded because the polar ice caps melted. Also, my god, this CGI shark is terrible. And why the hell is it so big? Do megalodons exist in this timeline too? Anywho, the wormhole eventually opens and the sliders land in a new timeline. They quickly learn that they are in a world where the British won the American Revolution, and George Washington was hanged in 1779. In fact, according to the Earth Prime website, the idea behind the Prince of Wales' timeline served as the inspiration for Sliders. Tracy Torme, screenwriter and producer of Sliders, claimed that it was while researching the American Revolution that he stumbled upon a close call Washington had with British sharpshooters. Torme theorized that had Washington died, it would end the revolution. Is this true? Well, George Washington was certainly an important leader for early America, and his success at keeping the Continental Army together contributed to America's victory. Nevertheless, the Battle of Saratoga, which is often considered by historians as a turning point of the war, was won by a general other than Washington, and the French army and navy that fought for the rebels probably played a big role in the ultimate defeat of Britain. Unfortunately, I just don't know if I can come up with a good answer without doing more research, and I really want to keep this video short, but if you have any thoughts, let me know. Anywho, this change meant that old revolutions following the American Revolution, like the French, Russian, or Chinese revolutions, never happened. Instead, the world is ruled by a handful of monarchs, democracy is unheard of, and speech is curtailed. According to the Earth Prime website, Mexico is also still controlled by Spain. Meanwhile, Britain and France are currently at war, and Canada is one of their battlegrounds, for some reason. Maybe France got control of Quebec again in some later conflict, but it's not clear. By the present day, America is known as the British States of America, and among many other changes, football is the most popular sport, there is a bank named after Benedict Arnold, and instead of the newspaper USA Today, we have the PSA Today. Their flag also appears to be the Grand Union flag, which in our timeline was the first flag of the United States. It seems slightly implausible for the BSA to use a flag adopted by American rebels, and honestly it seems more likely for them to use a version of the British Red Ensign, which was the flag used in the colonies before the revolution. Meanwhile, the current king has been lost on the battlefields in France, which brings up a lot of questions for me. Like, do British monarchs still lead armies in this timeline? Why the hell for? Are you trying to get your head of state killed? Nevertheless, this means that Prince Harold III, Prince of the Americas, or Great Britain, the episode isn't consistent about the title, is about to be crowned king, even though he is involved in an alleged sex scandal. In the meantime, the Sheriff of San Francisco is acting as regent until then. Anywho, this alternate timeline at first proves very welcoming to the Sliders, as people are super deferential to Arturo, and when Wade is almost run over, the driver lets them stay in a suite at the hotel he runs as a way to apologize. Turns out, however, that Arturo's double is the Sheriff of San Francisco, who is the de facto ruler over much of what would be Western America, and oppresses the people with high taxes. Realizing it will soon be discovered that Arturo is not the real deal, the sliders steal a car and all of the hotel's money, and then skedaddle out of there. Okay, they don't technically steal anything. Arturo just asks for it and is given to him since they think he is their tyrannical sheriff, but he made the request under false pretenses, so it's still stealing. Our heroes drive to Oakland, which in this timeline is a forest preserve rather than a city, where their car breaks down. Because of that, they were able to stumble upon a plot to kill Prince Harold, who was hunting in the forest. Yeah, it turns out the sheriff wants the prince dead because this will somehow allow him to seize the throne. Because I guess this royal family wasn't as prodigious as the one in our timeline, so there is no one else around with a blood king to the throne. So the sliders save Prince Harold, but they are all captured by a group of rebels known as the Oakland Raiders, a reference to the American football team that was based in Oakland from 1960 to 1981, before moving to LA from 1982 to 1984, then moving back to Oakland from 1995 to 2019, until they moved to Las Vegas in 2020. I don't know, sports ball. 
The Raiders at first want to kill Prince Harold and Arturo, who they believe is the sheriff, but Quinn is able to convince him that Arturo is not the sheriff and they should keep the prince alive. Instead, Quint encourages them to play Robin Hood, and the Raiders go on a crime spree throughout San Francisco as they rob from the rich and give to the poor. Which I'm guessing means the show's creators really like Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves, which came out a couple years before this episode aired. Meanwhile, Wei talks with Prince Harold, who crushes on her hard, but she turns him down since she can't stay in this timeline. The prince does manage to escape the Raiders, where he sees not only the terrible squalor on the streets of San Francisco, but also Quinn getting captured by the sheriff's agents. Afterwards, he returns to the Raiders and joins their cause. The sheriff schedules Quinn to be executed, but he is saved by the Raiders, Prince Harold, and the rest of the Sliders, who seize control of the TV studio where the sheriff is about to give a press conference. Arturo struggles to write out the Bill of Rights before the prince goes live on TV, while arguing with Rembrandt, who thinks this is a great time to improve on them by adding a clause about protecting the rights of all people, regardless of race or musical preference, haha, and removing the Second Amendment altogether. Huh, even in the 90s people had trouble with that amendment. Prince Harold broadcasts to the Empire that the Sheriff was plotting against the throne, which leads to him being arrested and Quinn being released just in time to catch the warm home before it closes. Before the sliders leave, Arturo passes on a hastily written copy of what he calls the Bill of Rights. But when Harold reads it, he says, We hold these truths to be self-evident, which is actually from the Declaration of Independence, so who knows what exactly Art and Company shared from America's founding documents. So that was the Prince of Wales, but is it any good? Well, it was certainly an improvement on the last episode, and yet I can't help the fact that it shares a lot of similarities with the pilot. For example, in both episodes, there's an evil Arturo doppelganger, and the sliders have to team up with a group of rebels to save one of their own. Meanwhile, the world building is rather weak and leaves me with more questions than answers. Like, why is California so important to this alternate British empire that the sheriff of San Francisco is able to exert this much power? Meanwhile, where is Parliament in all this? How the hell did they allow Britain to become an absolute monarchy again? Also, why are there no other revolutions ever? Did it just suddenly become unthinkable to rebel against the government? It also doesn't help that some of what I told you that is happening in the larger world comes from fan sources like the Earth Prime website, and not the episode proper. So it's not always clear what is canon and what is fan fiction. Nevertheless, I enjoyed The Prince of Wales. I think the show did a good job in using what little they had to work with to make a believable British America for television. Sure, the alternate history is weak, and it probably isn't a good sign for your show to be repeating story elements this soon, but the main characters kept me entertained for 45 minutes, and sometimes that's all you need. Well, that's all I have to say on the subject. If you enjoy what I do, please like, comment, subscribe, share this video, support me on Patreon. I'm Matt Mitrovich, The Alternate Historian. Bye.